Howdy folks, how are we doing? Draw me on another day, another adventure. Um, fast track obviously. And we're going to do some ploughing. Yeah, we have got a uh, Lemkin Jewel 8 on the back. So we'll get to the field and we'll have a look, see what's what. Right, well let's take this plough out of transport mode and we'll put it in work mode. Now as I say, this is a Lemkin Jewel 8. It's a 6 plus 1 uh, on demo to us obviously. Um, we have dropped it down to 6 because we only intend on buying a 6 furrow. Um, so uh, as you can see down the bottom there, yeah, I've got six bolt holes to put the extra furrow back on. But um, we're only interested in a six. So, yeah, it's manual vary width. It can be 12, 14, 16 or 18 inches. And you adjust that. There you go, there it is in metric in your centimetres. And you adjust it by putting that bolt in one of them different holes there. Um, yeah, it is also... It is also, it's an on land and in furrow plough. There we get in there like that. Yeah, which you change that middle ram there is what brings it from working on land, which is what it's in at the minute near enough, um, to when it's fully extended that moves out and it's sort of got this parallel linkage arrangement here and that moves the plough back in but you'll see in a minute when I lift it up but we've got to take the transport pin out first which is that pin there which you do by that right, we can now lift it up and we will roll it over we can then like that we can then turn the depth wheel or the transport wheel turn it 90 degrees into the angle of into the angle of work and we will be about ready. There's also this pin here which holds the depth wheel in place. This is the damper that, um, <coughs> excuse me, that um, reduces the shock when the wheel turns over. So you've got that pin there. And we need to put it into, if I can get it, into that hole. like so put that little retaining clip back in just need to lift her up a little bit like so right i just got to get that um, Yeah, now that pin is got lined in there we can just drop the plough down and we'll get the pin in so I'll hold it in so it's not too tricky to get it over as you can see that pin goes through there that's now got that that now holds that pin in to the turnover damper so that is that You've got a little stand on it for the yeah, for leg when you drop it off. Um, that this one here alters oh, your your front furrow width when you're in land, and it also straightens the plow. As you can see, we've got a bit of a gap there at the minute, which means you can adjust that so that the the land slides of the plow are in line with the tractor. 
So that's how you adjust that so it pulls straight rather than trying to make the tractor crab one way or the other. Well, that's locked off about where it should be. And like I say, that one, that just merely moves the plow from on land to in furrow. Which I'll just demonstrate because we are now ready to go to work. Ugh. Right, so if I just lift it up a little bit, you'll see now with this green spool, that's fully in the on land position. And bring it over like that. And there you go, it's set for working in the furrow. You then have to adjust the two. I'll quickly show you. You would then have to quickly adjust these depth stops here, which you merely turn that top, top turnbuckle, and it raises that stop up or down. And then you'd rate, you'd lower them down. So obviously when you're in the furrow, track this at an angle, it allows the plow to stay level. So that's the two things that you'd need to do. You'd also wanna, there's a tap there that locks it in that position for when you're on, far, when you're on land, so it pulls straight. But that also, when it turns over, that is the turnover that sucks the plow into, into, it sucks the plow straight, if you know what I mean. So it allows the plow to turn over without having to lift it up really high, gives you a lot of clearance for the bottom wheel. So inland, you'd open that and that would then, this ram would go in and out to suit, uh, to as you turn, you know, it'd be in, when you go when you're going along and then you'd lift it up and to turn it over it would then come out and the plow would sort of suck in the depth would come in closer you turn it over and then it would push it back out again and that that turnbuckle there is again once you've set that um you need you can leave it alone because that's that sets the front furrow width so there you go anyway we'll slide that bike over into We'll slide that back over into on land. Like so. And we are good to go. So we're aiming for what 35 centimeters 14 inches so we're about you know about there you're gonna have a bit of um, a bit of uh, leeway either side I mean it's pretty it's pretty hard down there still we're still not not might have a lot of rain we'll just have a look at the um, Yeah, yeah. 
is on the full stop. We've got a tram on there. Let's go to the bit where we have a tram lined it. It'll do. Yeah, roughly eight inches, which we're about eight inches, so we're far off, people. We're not far off. It's matching up pretty nice. You can see it's pretty, pretty level, isn't it? I reckon. We are going to have some big old boulders to knock down, though. That beast. Oosh. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> anyway, let's crack on, turn some more over. Yeah, 
I'd rather have the JCB than the FW at the minute. Have you got off the idea of having an FW? No, no, I won't. I still want one, but uh, they're not as practical as um, you know, there's a TW or the or a fast track, aren't they? Well, no, you can't really do much with an FW. No, because. Um, to the exhaust. Well, the reason is, basically, um, well, I could do that, I still could do that, but um, I no longer operate any of the old school fast tracks with the Cummins engines in, so, um, so you haven't got the lovely soundtrack that that Cummins used to play as, as background. It's, you know, this doesn't sound very good at all. 
none of the modern stuff does. I mean, I could do, a, I'd actually do a, um, a Ford TW one, stick one on the TW, but of course, the, you know, they don't do a lot of road work with the TW. Um, well, sort of two gears, and you've, you know, you're up to speed, so it's sort of, it's not the greatest, but I'll see if I put something together. But what that did do was that got me thinking. I know what I need to do. The old Ford T Dub needs an old school fast track for a stable mate, doesn't it? It would work perfectly. I could use the fast track, get a low loader, log the T Dub on, and you know, it gives me a lot greater scope to go to further places with the T Dub. Um, so, what do you think to that? Get an old school, you know, whether it be a 145. Or one of the 65 range, um, you know, 185, 65, or even maybe a 3185. That's something to think about. Just to admit, I saw, well, you know, when that thought crossed me, crossed me mind, I thought, hmm, I wonder. So, yeah. Ta-ta!